Valve's next game is a third-person sci-fi action competitive shooter, tenuously taking place in a few different universes that Valve has had some hand in over the last 20 years. Ice Frog had a major role in its basic design philosophy, although Ice Frog is not the director of said game. And this competitive shooter has a class and team-based edge that many other shooters are doing. This is a MOBA light. This is a class-based, team-based, third-person action MOBA light shooter where you have two teams on a very large playing field effectively attempting, at least in what will likely be the game mode that launches with Neon Prime, you gotta take down the Ancient or the Citadel or whatever they end up calling the big MacGuffin that you need to shoot down at the other side of the other team's base. Neon Prime has a few selling points to differentiate itself from other third-person shooter mobileite games. Strife comes to mind as one, such as a voxel-based destruction system that allows individuals to effectively destroy any of the terrain around them. Think teardown, but at a much higher resolution. That system is using different functionality and features that were originally designed for a game called Arti, A-R-T-I, which was canceled years ago. That was a whole other thing. But Neon Prime is trying to push the envelope on how a competitive team can coordinate because when a team has the capability of effectively carving their own path to the enemy, how do you balance around that? How do you fight that? What kind of resources are required for that? And how do you gather said resources? Of course, there are neutral creeps, neutral enemies, neutral NPCs, shops, crafting, and your average Neon Prime game, at least according to people who have been playtesting it, is around 60 to 90 minutes, so it is a time investment, and there will likely be more casual game modes shipping alongside. It has a deep lore behind it that seems to be deeply Combine, but yet deeply Heroes of New Earth. Uh, there have been many rumors over the years that Ice Frog, whom before working on Dota 2, worked on another MOBA called Heroes of New Earth, wanted to be able to bring some of that lore and character from New Earth into Dota 2. And although it's been years and we've seen references to New Earth based heroes and creeps, it's never happened in Dota 2. It seems as if this sci fi twist that we're seeing in Neon Prime, which seems very far, far away from New Earth, is just doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff. And I want to talk about something. There was at one point a rumor going around that an early idea of Dota 2 was that the Keen Folk, the technologically advanced race uh, faction group of people within the Dota 2 lore, uh, gained the ability to jump universes. And that's actually still in the game. The universe jumping is something that you see with many different types of heroes coming together. I'm not a massive Dota 2 fan. I was an Underlords and Artifact fan, but you have different spirits that represent the different universes. But at one point, portals were supposed to be opened and referenced other Valve franchises, specifically the Combine in Dota 2. That never came to fruition. That never really came out of like a whiteboard meeting. But that basic idea it could very well be what we're dealing with when talking about Neon Prime. We've, we've discussed most of this before. Neon Prime, there really isn't much else to say because we pretty much get it. It's a third person mobile light shooter, class based, team based, cooperative, competitive, asymmetrical gameplay based on the types of classes that you play with certain classes acting as commanders that allow you to effectively command the rest of your team, which does play in part with how that team is supposed to orchestrate around the ability to have voxel-based destruction in much of the map. Maps are huge. There's a train that takes you from different areas of the map because the maps are so big. Neutral creeps and resources allow you to both gain experience within the character. The character experience is just within the game itself, a la Dota 2. But then the resources are also used for crafting. Crafting is a bit more in-depth than what you see in Dota 2, which is literally just make sure you own these items and then it will change. It doesn't necessarily work like that in Neon Prime. All of that has been said before. The difference here is that we're very close to its announcement. Well, let's back up for a second. The only reason we know Neon Prime, the name Neon Prime, is because of a trademark that was filed 
two years ago. Up until that point, everything related to this third-person MOBA game was called Citadel, and when we were referring to it as Citadel, it came out of a code name that leaked within multiple places within Source 2. The Source 2 tools that shipped alongside Half-Life Alex allow you to launch it in a Citadel mode, allowing for new features, specifically a top-down map, a grid-based leveling system, significantly higher AI procedural generation pathfinding, which we later found out melds perfectly into the voxel-based instruction system. However, it was always called Citadel. And also, and it, it's unknown if this is still the case, I have literally never been able to get anyone to confirm or deny this. Neon Prime at one point was an asymmetric VR game where certain classes could only be played within VR. Specifically, the Commander class was best used in virtual reality. It's been years since I've heard anything related to virtual reality and Citadel, AKA Neon Prime, and literally every single person I've spoken to related to Neon Prime won't answer that question. The trademark has gone through a few revisions. When you apply for a trademark in the United States, it has to go through the application process and the application has to be accepted. Then it has to be judged whether or not it can actually be given to a person. That's so that people don't end up trademarking very generic things like the word react. It got accepted and then a while passed. So much time passed that Valve was actually at risk of losing the trademark as it had sat dormant for nearly two years. Until about a couple of weeks ago where not only was it renewed, but it went through the secondary process of approval, which allows for that trademark to be utilized in a product for public release. It hit that point and for some reason, the American Trademark Office website lists Neon Prime having a release window in November. Now, the Trademark Office is not a place that would leak a video game's launch date. Exactly what's going on with this launch window beats me. I don't completely understand trademark and copyright law. If you're a lawyer, let me know. That said, the International. Valve's nearly yearly competition tournament for Dota 2 is happening again. And for the first time in a very, very long time, it's in Seattle, Valve's backyard. And there are some rumblings. There's some weird hush-hush conversations going on related to Valve doing more than just the normal tourney stuff at this year's International, showcasing their hardware, allowing people to get their hands on the Steam Deck and demonstration booths and possibly actually announcing Neon Prime there. I'm not confirming that that is happening. All I am telling you is that there are some pretty strong rumors to point in that direction. That said, the last time Valve ever considered doing something along these lines, it did not go well. Neon Prime is not the kind of game that many people want out of Valve, but to be honest, the last 15 years of Valve software has not been about making the kind of games that other people want, for better or worse. The last four games that they launched, Artifact, Underlords, Half-Life Alex, and Counter-Strike 2, all have questionable levels of quality other than Half-Life Alex. That's it's phenomenal. So Neon Prime isn't Half-Life 3, it isn't the updates that the Dota 2 community want, it isn't bringing Counter-Strike 2 in feature parity with the version of Counter-Strike that they have officially delisted off of Steam, it is a brand new competitive game that in the minds of Valve's other competitive fans are going to take resources away from. That's true, but those resources were taken away years ago when Neon Prime started development sometime in January of 2018. So, I mean, you could make that argument, but that argument will not stick. Neon Prime is a weird game. It's a very cool game. It's apparently very fun to play. The art style is great. It's not like Dota 2 where there are so many characters that nobody can actually get a personality or a word in edgewise. It's a fairly limited cast of classes and each of those classes are quite unique and very much benefit the kind of game that Neon Prime is attempting to be. I'm not saying that this is a spiritual successor to TF2's class system, but what I am saying is the classes that Neon Prime are putting forward are far more like Team Fortress 2's classes in that they have a defined personality and less like Dota 2 where they're just like, you know, big fantasy creatures with funny voices. Also, don't get at me about the Dota lore stuff. Like, Team Fortress 2's characterization can be learned by just playing the game and watching like two YouTube videos on, on Valve's YouTube channel. Dota 2's lore, you have to watch documentaries, very good ones, made by Sir Action Slacks, but 
come on. So that's what we're looking forward to. That's the next thing. The app IDs have actually been known about. I can't talk about why, but there were some things that happened a while ago that allowed some individuals to identify what app IDs on Steam belong to Citadel, AKA Neon Prime. There are a few of them, one of them being the actual internal development branch and the other one being used for external playtesting because closed beta playtesting has been taking place for like a year now on and off. And those have been frequently updated since they were found. A little less lately, but that can be attributed to Counter-Strike 2's launch not going well. They're in development. They're still in heavy development. They were playable a year and a half ago, and they were really just needing to be balanced and playtested, and the final art and voice acting had to go in. It lines up Neon Prime being able to launch sometime at the end of this year, at least in an open beta. No idea if that's actually happening. This is Valve Software. They could have a fully polished, finished product ready to go, and still pull the plug. They have done that multiple times, but that's the thing. That is one of the next things, Neon Prime. It will be a game that a lot of people will try and get their foot in the door at to be the Neon Prime content creator. So you're gonna be hearing a lot about it when it does happen. It's a competitive game. It's not for everyone. It's not Half-Life 3. It's competitive. I'm excited to see how this story turns out, how the deep lore of Neon Prime somehow connects the Half-Life franchise to the possibly Dota 2 franchise. And I would also like to be able to see just how deep the deep lore connection to the Combine, the Neon Prime classes really are. They could just end up canceling the game. It's Valve. Valve has other things in development. Um, I want to make a video called The History of Valve's Future, little chapters and each of those chapters are mini documentaries for each of the current in-depth projects and the history of those projects. Obviously, Neon Prime would be one of them and it would just be a summary of this video, but then we would also have the Steam Deck 2, the Valve Deckard, the Steam Deck TV, HLX, Counter-Strike 2, and Neon Prime. There are a few other smaller things in development. There is a rumor that there is like two people trying to get a team together to do Portal 3, but I don't know about that. And of course, you still have Dota 2 updates, Team Fortress 2 updates, Proton updates, SteamOS, SteamVR 2.0, and SteamVR updates, Steam itself, and a few other smaller things. So if you're interested in that, get subscribed and let me know. My DMs on Twitter, I guess it's called X now, and Discord are always open. My email is tylernewsnetwork at gmail.com. If you want to see anything, if you know anything, if you want to talk or ask a question, feel free to reach out. I'm not always going to respond, but I try. And if you want to see more content from me, uh, think about possibly supporting it. You know, AdSense is down, so we got to figure out how to eat somehow. I have a Patreon and Floatplane page, both of those down in the description below. And I really appreciate if you could check them out. I'm Tyler McVicker, the passionate gamer, as Gabe Newell once called me, and I will see you next time. Peace and air, Reese. Adios.